as the world warms, there'll be too many female turtles. This is because the sex of marine turtles depends on what the temperature was when they were eggs. If the eggs were too warm, they're more likely to hatch as females. Too cool, more likely to be males. And as the world warms, so does the sandy beaches where the turtles lay their eggs. And this sex skewing is happening already. Green turtles in the northern Great Barrier Reef are hatching mostly as females. Having too many females is not necessarily a bad thing, particularly if you're an endangered species like the green turtle. In fact, it's better to have a population skewed towards females. But how much of a sex bias is a bad thing? And in some northern Queensland populations, only 1% of the eggs hatching as males. That can't be good. This is only going to get worse as the earth continues to warm. And alongside a warming climate comes rising sea levels. This is also not great for turtles. If the nests are underwater for too long, their eggs drown. It may seem strange that an animal like a turtle that spends almost its entire life at sea needs to return to land to lay its eggs. But reptiles are like us, they breathe air. And the embryos within the eggs get oxygen from the air in the sand or soil they're buried in. Green turtle eggs can survive flooding for a short time. But after about six hours underwater, about a third of the eggs will die. Any longer and more won't make it. That's why the mother turtle lumbers so far up the beach. She needs to get to a high point, way above the high tide to lay her eggs before heading back out to sea. But with rising sea levels, the high tide mark moves up, limiting even further suitable nesting spots. And in popular nesting beaches, competition for those ideal nesting spots is already high. So high that many turtles nest too close to the water and risk losing their eggs to drowning. But turtles are gutsy. When hatchlings are digging themselves out of their underground nests, they work together and so conserve energy. It'll take them up to eight days to dig up through 40 centimetres of sand. And this is a smart strategy as they need to retain every bit of energy they can because once free, they need to run for their lives. Birds, reptiles and snakes lie in wait for a meal of turtle hatchling. The baby turtles scuttle across the exposed sandy beach heading for the safety of the ocean. Digging together conserves energy, like birds flying in formation. This is social facilitation. Baby turtles laid in a large clutch, for example, of about 60 eggs, they'll use about 10% of their energy reserves to dig themselves out. This leaves more energy for that dangerous dash across the beach and for their first strokes in the ocean. But the poor little guys laid in small clutches, say 10 or so eggs, they have to use more than half of their energy reserves to dig themselves out. This leaves less energy for that dangerous dash. Now, I come from a big family. All it taught me was how to eat really fast before my brother stole my food. But for turtles, coming from a big family means they have more energy saving help and protection. This is more than cool science fact. Knowing this is helping turtle conservation. An important turtle conservation strategy has been to dig up clutches and redistribute the eggs from a single large clutch into lots of smaller ones. This was to reduce risk to any one clutch. But remember, reducing clutch size below an optimum means that there's not enough siblings to dig together so they'll have less energy to make that arduous dash across the beach to get to the water. Marine turtles have been around for a long time, at least 200 million years. Turtles are already shifting nesting times to cooler times of the year and nesting further south in cooler regions. They've adapted to environmental change before. Let's hope they can do it again.